I've wanted to make a video about Leiji Matsumoto's anime for a long time. I'm talking years. I've wanted to make a video about Leiji Matsumoto and the anime he was behind. I'd always put it off in favor of discussing more current anime because trying to elegantly describe my thoughts and feelings about the quote unquote Leijiverse while also being informative was a challenge for me. How much do I focus on the history and career of Leiji Matsumoto in the video? How do I discuss, summarize, review the mini series he created? All I knew was that I wanted to talk about Leiji Matsumoto and the mini series he created because I really enjoyed them. As I write this script for this video, I don't know where it will go or how it will get there. All I know is that this video will be about Leiji Matsumoto and the mini series he created. Think of it as an adventure, a great journey with an unknown destination. All journeys start somewhere and the best place to start is at the beginning. On January 25th, 1938, a boy named Akira Matsumoto was born in Kurame, Fukuoka, Japan, who would later be known by his pen name, Leiji Matsumoto. He was the middle child of seven brothers. Young Matsumoto was given a 35mm projector by his father and watched American cartoons. At the age of six, Matsumoto began drawing. Three years later, he started drawing manga, influenced by the works of Osamu Tezuka, the father of manga, the godfather of manga, and for some, the god of manga. Honestly, Osamu Tezuka would need his own video. Growing up, the young Leiji Matsumoto was interested in science fiction novels by authors such as Una Juza and H.G. Wells. In 1954, at the age of 16, he made his manga debut under his real name, a one-chapter story titled Mutsubachi no Boken, or Honey Bee's Adventures, was published in the magazine Manga Shonen. At the age of 18, Matsumoto moved to Tokyo to become a manga artist, initially specializing in sojo manga, manga aimed at girls and young women. In 1961, Matsumoto married fellow manga artist Miyako Maki, who would go on to create Lika-chan, a popular line of fashion dolls in Japan. Matsumoto and Maki worked together on various manga, and through this collaboration, Maki would influence Matsumoto to create strong and fierce female characters, becoming one of the first artists to develop such characters in shonen, manga aimed at boys and young men. Matsumoto would pin titles such as Bara Iro no Tenshi in 1964, another single chapter story, Sexroid in 1968, an erotic comedy manga that had four volumes, Mystery Eve in 1970, which spanned two volumes, and Submarine Super 99, also in 1970, which also spanned two volumes. However, it would get a 13 episode anime adaptation in 2003 which I unfortunately haven't seen, as it doesn't seem to be available on any legal streaming service here in the US. While Submarine Super 99 would eventually get an anime, Matsumoto's big break came in 1971 at the age of 33, with the manga series Otoko Oeden, a six volume series that follows Nobuta Oyama, a young man trying to make ends meet and prepare for university entrance exams, a title that was more popular in Japan than outside. Around the same time, Matsumoto began a series of short stories set during World War II. These stories would become popular under the title The Cockpit and would later receive a three episode OVA in 1993. It focused on outcasts of their respective armies who wanted little to nothing to do with the war. Strong in anti-war themes, it's something that's often present in many of Matsumoto's stories. Again, this is another anime I haven't seen because some of these anime are hard to find. In 1972, Matsumoto created the dark western comedy Gun Frontier, which was published in the magazine Play Comic a three-volume series set in the Wild West. It follows Tochiro Oyama and Franklin Hark Jr. as they search for a clan of lost Japanese immigrants. It would eventually get a 13-episode anime adaptation in 2002. 
An anime I have seen, admittedly it's been a while, but it was decent from what I remember. It's not my favorite Leiji Matsumoto anime, but it's certainly worth a look. Coming to 1974, we have one of the more well-known titles and one that has had a lasting effect on anime. Space Battleship Yamato, or as some know it, Star Blazers. The development of Space Battleship Yamato has its own interesting history. It was originally planned to be a tokusatsu, a live action, special effects driven series like Godzilla, Kamen Rider, or Super Sentai, aka Power Rangers. The story itself was originally intended to be a space version of Lord of the Flies and was titled Asteroid Ship Icarus, before later becoming Yamato. Eiichi Yamamoto had overseen the concept production of the series, but had to leave to work on a documentary. Toshio Masuda, who worked on Tora Tora Tora, was asked to step in as a replacement, but declined due to other projects. The role was eventually given to Leiji Matsumoto, who had turned down an earlier offer because he wanted more creative control. Matsumoto would overhaul the story and would design the ship based on the real life IJN Yamamoto. He would come up with the crew and the wave motion gun. Matsumoto also directed the Space Battleship Yamato anime and many of its various sequels. He also wrote the three volume manga adaptation of the Space Battleship Yamato anime. Now this is going to sound crazy for someone who has enjoyed a lot of Leiji Matsumoto's work. I haven't seen Space Battleship Yamato or Star Blazers, whatever you prefer to call it. Not the original not the sequels, not even any of the remakes. I hope to fix that one day. I ended up going down a separate rabbit hole when I first got into Leiji Matsumoto's work. One involving a character that was originally planned to be in Space Battleship Yamato, but was cut when the original number of ordered episodes was reduced. I'm referring to space pirate Captain Harlock. In January 1977, Matsumoto started a new manga titled Space Pirate Captain Harlock, which would be adapted into an anime in March 1978. The manga had 5 volumes, and the anime had 42 episodes. The series follows Captain Harlock and his crew aboard the spaceship Arcadia, as they defend Earth from aliens known as Mazone. I really enjoyed this anime. Harlock himself is really cool, again anti-war themes are present in this anime as well. Characters like Tadashi and Keiyuki get good character development as the series progresses. The unspoken relationship between Harlock and Mimei I always found interesting and a good pairing as they both have feelings of isolation. Harlock an outcast for rebelling against Earth's government and humanity's general apathy, Mimei Seemingly the last of her kind. This is where Leiji Mato's works, or more specifically, the Leijiverse, can get confusing, especially for new viewers. There have been various retellings and reimaginings of the Space Pirate Captain Harlock series over the years, some of which have had their own sequels, like Arcadia of My Youth and its sequel, Endless Orbit SSX, both from 1982. There have also been a number of crossovers. The most notable one, and the one that got me hooked on Leiji Matsumoto's work, Galaxy Express 3 9. Also in 1977, Matsumoto started the Galaxy Express 3 9 manga, which ran for 18 volumes. It would receive an anime adaptation in 1978, consisting of 113 episodes. It follows an impoverished 10 year old named Tetsuro who wants a machine body after his mother is killed. These bodies are supposedly given away for free in the Andromeda Galaxy, and the best way to get there is on the Galaxy Express 3-9. Tetsuro is found by a mysterious woman named Maytel. Maytel offers Tetsuro to be her traveling companion aboard the Galaxy Express 3-9, where many adventures ensue as they make their way to the end of the line. I don't know if Galaxy Express 3-9 is for everyone, it's a lot of episodes and quite episodic. I found that episodes could be hit or miss, but there was enough intrigue in the setting, the slow and steady growth of Tetsuro's character, and I just found Maytel to be a fascinating character. She's beautiful, 
can hold her own in a fight, but she's also compassionate, melancholy, and lonely. There is a level of mystique around her to the extent of, is she a machine or is she human? That mystery was a big factor in me continuing to watch other Ladyverse entries, just in case there was another clue. There was a movie adaptation of Galaxy Express 39 in 1979, which had a sequel in 1981 called Adu Galaxy Express 39, and a sequel to that in 1996 called Galaxy Express 39 Eternal Fantasy. Maytel would later have entries that focused more on her, such as Maytel Legends in 2002 and Space Symphony Maytel in 2004. She appears in a number of other Ladyverse entries, you never quite know where she'll appear next. Sometimes, not even in the Ladyverse. Maytel was a reoccurring character for a short time in Shikansen Hinkei Robo Shinka Lion Z. Say that ten times fast. It's basically a mecha transforming train anime series for kids that started in 2018, which admittedly I'd probably check out if it was streaming in the US. While Captain Harlock didn't make an appearance in Space Battleship Yamato, he did make an occasional appearance in Galaxy Express 39. So did another interesting character, Queen Emeraldus. In 1978, Leiji Matsumoto wrote and illustrated a four-volume series called Queen Emeraldus, which was later made into a four-episode OVA in 1998. A lone warrior sails the endless planets of the universe, fighting tyranny and tormented by the memory of her lost love. I have seen the OVA, but it is a bit fuzzy at this point. I vaguely remember there being some early CGI ships, which probably turned me off to the anime a bit. Not only that, but I find Emeraldus more interesting because of her relationships. The aforementioned lost love, Tochiro Oyama, with whom she had a daughter, was a very good friend of Captain Harlock. In addition, Harlock often looks in on his friend's daughter, Mayu. Mayu is quite important to the space pirate Captain Harlock series and Harlock's character, as she is able to show him the hope and goodness in humanity. Also interesting is the relationship between Emeraldus and Maytel, as they are sisters. The latter is shown a bit more in Maytel Legend and Space Symphony Maytel. In 1980, Leiji Matsumoto wrote and illustrated another manga, this one called Queen Millennia, which consisted of five volumes and received a 42 episode anime adaptation in 1981. It's kind of a prequel to everything related to Maytel or Emeraldus in the Lejiverse. It follows Hajime Amamori, whose uncle is a scientist known as Professor Amamori. The professor discovers a new planet in the solar system and calculates that it is on a collision course with Earth. However, a young woman named Yayoi Yukino turns out to be connected to the approaching planet. The rogue planet and the possible alien side of things of Queen Millennia I found interesting, as they are aspects related to Maytel and Emeraldus, quite literally as Yayoi is their mother. I would adjust expectations if you plan to watch it because of Maytel and Emeraldus. We don't see them being born or anything, not like Luke and Leia in Star Wars Episode 3. I should also add that while the Legiverse has had a decent amount of character crossovers, prequels, and sequels, it's not super straightforward. It's not always released in order, things take place at different points in time, and there's a potential multiverse aspect to it as well. There are characters that look like other characters, some of which are by design, but whether or not you're going to get answers as to why they look the same may be up to interpretation by the viewer. If you plan to watch or read the Lejiverse entries, expecting it to be a clearly laid out universe that connects all or at least most of the dots, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Lejiverse is not really that. I think it's more about the individual characters, their stories, and the messages and themes that they convey, and that it's kind of cool when there's a crossover or when one of the stories leads into another. In the 80s and 90s there were various sequels retellings and adaptations of Matsumoto's manga and anime, many of which I've already mentioned when I covered the original. So let's leave the manga and anime for a moment and talk about a video game from the year 2000, Cosmo Warrior Zero. 
Matsumoto is credited with working on the story, Cosmo Warrior Zero is a sci-fi third-person shooter game released by Taito for the PlayStation 1 and PC. Set after humans defeated machines in a war, you play as Warrior Zero who has been given a nigh impossible task. Capture Space Pirate Captain Harlock I haven't played the game as it was exclusive to Japan, but that's not a big problem as the game got a 15 episode anime adaptation in 2001. Again, it's been a while since I watched the anime, but I remember thinking it was okay. There are certainly some familiar faces that show up, and not just Captain Harlock. There seemed to be a refinement in the character design for Matsumoto's characters around this time. They look more modern, but very much in line with Matsumoto's original designs. A lot of the Lagiverse deals with stories involving Harlock, Emeraldus, or Maytel to some degree. So let's get away from that for a bit and go with something a little daft and punk. Other than Space Battleship Yamato, aka Star Blazers, it's probably the best known work with Leiji Matsumoto's name attached to it outside of Japan. Interstellar 4-5, The Story of the Secret Star System, a music film that serves as a visual companion to Daft Punk's Discovery album. Directed by Kazuhisa Takenochi, the movie was supervised by Matsumoto, and of course, the character designs are very Matsumoto-esque. It's a very cool concept, there's no dialogue, the story is told entirely through animation and music with occasional sound effects, it's about an alien band that's kidnapped by an evil record producer and forced to perform on Earth, which I assume applies to about 30% of the music industry. The album, Discovery, is kind of the centerpiece of Daft Punk's career. Even if you didn't listen to Daft Punk religiously, you've probably heard one or two of the songs on this album, and by proxy, in the movie. It's likely that anyone watching this has already seen it, and compared to many of Matsumoto's other works, Interstellar 4 5 is much more accessible, as the movie is available song by song on Daft Punk's YouTube channel. I'll have a link to the playlist in a card or in the description if you're interested in checking it out. Getting back to trains flying through space like Galaxy Express 3-9, Leiji Matsumoto produced the anime The Galaxy Railways in 2003. The first season consisted of 26 episodes, the second season which started in 2006 had 24 episodes, and there was a 5 episode OVA that started in late 2006 and ended in 2007. The story follows Yuki Manabu, who joins the Space Defense Force that protects the safety of the Galaxy Railways. I remember really enjoying the first season, but not liking the second season as much. The OVA features Maytel, so at least it had that going for it. Again, it's been a while since I watched a lot of these anime, so I know this isn't a deep analysis or breakdown of the series or the characters, but I wanted to throw in my two cents on them from what I could remember. In 2009, Matsumoto dipped his toes back into the music world by serving as a producer on the music video for Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. Yes, that Bohemian Rhapsody. This is an official thing, not an AMV or anything. The characters featured, while resembling some familiar faces, are actually from a special edition one volume manga from 2009 called Out of Galaxy Gin no Koshika. This is what I can gather from what Captain Urias mentioned on Twitter. The manga was only sold in a certain bookstore, and there were only 999 copies, so pretty rare. The story takes place on a dimensional ship commanded by Yo Hagoro that goes into space to save Earth from destruction. That seems to be the story the music video tells. I don't know if it was ever officially uploaded, but you can find the music video easily enough on YouTube. It's worth checking out if you like Matsumoto or Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody and didn't know about this little hidden gem. In 2012, a six episode anime called Ozuma was released. It was based on an unused script written by Matsumoto in 1980. It follows desert trader Sam Cohn rescuing a woman named Maya from a group of soldiers. Another anime I haven't seen, but I'd like to check it out if it's available for streaming somewhere. Around the same time, Space Battleship Yamato would see a resurgence. A remake titled Space Battleship Yamato 2199 would be released, and has had several sequels since then. 
the most recent one, at the time of this video, was released in February 2022, but I don't think Matsumoto was very involved in any of the productions. Another Matsumoto classic would get a remake in 2013, a movie titled Harlock, Space Pirate, a CG animated movie based on space pirate Captain Harlock. Again, I don't think Matsumoto had much to do with the production, but they're obviously his characters. Excellent CG for 2013, I enjoyed the movie overall. I think Harlock looks great even in CG. It's not my favorite version of Mimei, but almost every Mimei is different in every Harlock adaptation or retelling. At the very least, the CG has come a long way since Queen Emeraldus back in 1998. In 2014, Matsumoto would work again on the story of Harlock in Captain Harlock Dimensional Voyage, this time alongside Kochi Shimahoshi. Spanning 10 volumes, it's a retelling of the original 1978 manga, with pretty major plot differences, but very modernized versions of Matsumoto's classic character designs. I've read it once before, it has really nice art of these classic characters now modernized, but I felt it was a bit too heavy on cameos of other Matsumoto characters that didn't add much or go anywhere in the story of Dimensional Voyage. But again, if you're a fan of Matsumoto, maybe worth picking up, at least for the artwork. At 2017 Japan Expo, a trilogy of films titled The Zero Century was announced. The first movie, scheduled for 2020, was titled The Zero Century Emeraldus. The second film titled The Zero Century Harlock was scheduled for 2023, and the final film, scheduled for 2026, was titled The Zero Century Maytel. Posters and illustrations for the trilogy were shown at the event, however, none of the films have been released, and there's no word on when they will be. In 2019, Matsumoto suffered severe respiratory problems during a visit to Italy as part of the 40th anniversary celebrations for Captain Harlock. He collapsed during an event in Turing. He was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Two days later, he was considered out of danger and would eventually be released. In 2021 came more Captain Harlock, courtesy of Ablaze Publishing. A six-issue comic book titled Space Pirate Captain Harlock was released. Story by Leiji Matsumoto and Jerome Alki, art also by Alki, it's a side story set in the timeline of the original series about Harlock and his crew finding a new type of Mazone. I liked it overall, the art is very reminiscent of Matsumoto's original style, not sure how well it fits into the original timeline, but it was nice to see these versions of the characters again, as well as some familiar faces one more time. On February 13th, 2023, Leiji Matsumoto passed away in a Tokyo hospital due to acute heart failure. He was 85 years old. In a career that spanned more than 65 years, Matsumoto's stories and characters captured the imagination and taught us lessons we should take to heart, sometimes showing us the cost of war, but also the thrill of adventure and discovery. Leiji Matsumoto, will be missed. I know I didn't cover everything Matsumoto created. He created a lot. I also didn't cover every aspect of his life. He lived a long life. There's limited information in English. As I mentioned, outside of Yamato and Interstellar 4-5, Matsumoto's other works weren't quite as popular outside Japan, so unfortunately there are bound to be holes in the available information. I'd like to end the video with two quotes, the first from Leiji Matsumoto himself in a 2018 interview. War destroys your future, the civilization of mankind. I was told by my father that any life is born in order to live, not to die. I think we should not be wasting time fighting on the earth. And finally, a quote from Leiji Matsumoto's daughter, Makiko, after his passing. Manga artist Leiji Matsumoto set out on a journey to the Sea of Stars. I think he lived a happy life, thinking about continuing to draw stories as a manga artist.